Okay, so we'll go back to another video. So here we have the 2017 Vietnam Math Olympiad, and this is question five, or to be specific, this is question one of day two of the examination, that we want to find all functions f mapped from the real to the real such that for all x and y that are part of the real numbers, then we have the following functional equation. So we have f of x times f of y minus f of x is equal to two times f of x plus x times y. So when we're dealing with functional equations, it's a little bit of a simile like we're dealing with an equation in general, something for an unknown variable. In this case, we're trying to find the unknown function that satisfies, you know, the given. So usually with stuff like this, it's actually good to do like a guess and check rather sim simply starting with like the most basic case, a variable equals zero, for example, Let and then seeing what kind of observations you can make from there with, you know, the whole constants and all that. And a little bit of a different turnaround from here, we're actually going to call this like our given assertion such that we're actually going to plug in different variables and to the point that we can actually make even more observations to the point that where we can actually find our unknown function. And it's also good to check that whether the function we were trying to look for is whether it's a bijective function or not. So that will actually come in handy with a lot of that stuff. So under that, I think this is a really um, cool exercise from, you know, this Olympiad. Um, just a little bit of a fun fact about me. I'm actually Chinese, but both of my parents are actually born in Vietnam. So I know it's a little weird to think that if I'm considered Vietnamese, but I'm actually not. It's just like there's a Chinatown community in that specific region of um, Ho Chi Minh City. That's where they're originally from. So nothing to do with this. I just thought that's um, <laughs> good, something interesting to point out. So anyway, with that, let's actually just jump right in. So we're going to actually call our given functional equation. We'll let this be assertion of P of X, Y. P of X, Y like being our statement, for example. So let that be the given of assertion. Now we'll actually show that mainly that the function we're trying to look for is indeed a bijective function. So assume that there exists A and B that are in the real numbers such that we need to show that for one, it is you know one to one, meaning that f of a is equal to f of b. Well, if f of a is equal to f of b, then it implies that a is equal to b. So for a situation like this, let's suppose that we let x not equal to zero and to point out the surjection part that it means it's onto that's what it means to have a, to be a bijective function if you're both onto and it's one to one so if you actually let this um do not let x equal zero then if you let y vary then you can also clearly see that from that that f is indeed a surjection function that's actually going to come into play now for the one to one case we have that for the assertion p of x a and then p of x b so that would have to mean that if I just plug x a into our given, you know, functional equation over here, rather the right hand side, what we're looking at. So that means a's and b, they're going to be the y inputs. So that would have to mean that looking from the right hand side, so I have that 2 of f of x, add this with x times a is equal to 2 of f of x plus x times b and then you'll see that if you solve this out this is very straightforward to see that a is indeed equal to b and so therefore f is indeed a bijective function where i just i didn't really show the proof but i gave more of the explanation about why f of being surjective for if you vary y you don't let equal zero and then here's the whole proof for the one-to-one -one situation so with that in mind let's continue forward and say that suppose that if the next assertion we deal with is that our input we're um, going to put in is that we let x equals negative 2 we let y equals f of negative 2 hence being the, the surjection part coming in so now if i plug this back in so this is looking specifically at the right hand side so that means i have 2 of f of negative 2 and then subtract 2 of f of negative 2 that's going to equal 0 all right so if I look at the left hand side, you just plug the same thing, but really everything of that input is the real number. So I'll actually call this f of z. So we know that f of z, after we plug this in, is going to equal zero for z is a real number. Okay, so we just have to figure out what, what is z such that it actually follows, satisfies the following over here. So now the next part is we're actually gonna plug in some different inputs to um, form these observations of what we can make from here from the conclusions rather so first let's actually start off with if we let y equals zero so i have um, p of x and then comma zero so if i plug this back into our you know functional equation over here so that means i have f of x times f of zero and then subtract f of x so that's actually set to equal to just so that means that's just going to leave off with just two times f of x okay 
So let me actually first label this as equation one. So it doesn't look like we do with much um, for now, but this is actually something to, um, that will come in handy. So let me put that there first. So the next one we'll do is let's actually suppose X, Y are both equal to Z. So that means, so P of Z and then comma Z. So that means I have F of F of Z, then multiply by F of Z, subtract F of Z, and then set this equal to two times F of Z, and then add this with Z square. Okay. And so what we have is that F of Z, originally we said that it is going to equal zero. So I'll just underline this first. And I just put this back in, so that means f of z then times zero, minus zero, and then two times zero plus z squared. And so therefore that's to say that f of zero is equal to z squared. Okay, so now I'll put this as equation number two. So the next one we'll deal with is we'll let x equals z and we'll let y equals x. So p of z, p of z and then comma x. So that'll give us f of z then times f of um, x, z by mistake, and then subtract f of z, then that means that's just gonna equal to the right-hand side, that's two times f of z, and then plus z times x. And so we know that f of z is just gonna equal zero, so that means that just leaves us with f of z times f of x is just equal to z times x, so let's label that as equation number three. And then one more we'll deal with is we'll let y equals z. So that means p of x comma z. Then putting, putting, putting things back in over here. So that will give us f of x times f of z and minus f of x is equal to two times f of x and then add this with x times z. So if I actually just um, substitute for f of z is equal to zero. So therefore that means I have f of negative f of x is equal to two times f of x and then just plus x times z. So, okay, so that's all we're left with for now. Okay, so now here's something what we're gonna do from here. So we have our four equations. Now suppose that if I plug in another assertion that if we let p, so we let our assertion p and then our inputs be z comma zero, so y equals zero and then x is equal to z. So putting this back in, I have f of z f of zero and then subtract f of z and then set this equal to two times f of z. Now if I just plug in everything we said that f of z is equal to zero back into here. So then that will yield us with, so let's see, this is zero. So that means I'll have f of z f of zero, then that's just gonna equal zero over here. Then we notice that f of zero is indeed just equal to z square over here. So substitute this back in. So z square. But we also said that for the input that f of z is equal to zero. So in other words, I set this equal to z. And if I were to solve this out for z, then we have z is going to be three different solutions. We have zero, plus and minus one. Okay. And so that leaves us with what, what does this mean for z equals these three solutions? Well. Only one of them can, only one of these answers works such that, or rather we may not know yet. It could be more, it could be at least one of them. But so in this situation, we have to do things case by case, one at a time to see which of these, uh, you know, the solution works such that eventually continuing forward, we'll actually find the function we'll need to satisfy the following. So with that, let's actually continue forward with splitting these three cases up. So to reiterate things I have, we saw from earlier that f of z is equal to zero for some real number z. We, had, we came down to these three solutions from the assertion we plugged in earlier that z is equal to zero or plus or minus one. And then from the four given equations, we plug in those different assertions. And then that will actually, these equations will help us in the long run when we plug each of these you know, solutions you know, case by case. So with that in mind, let's actually do case one, case two, and case three. So let's actually start off with the simple case z is equal to zero. So case one, z is equal to zero. For z is equal to zero, plugging this back here, so that'll yield us with from number two that f of zero is going to equal zero. And so and from equation one, so that means now, and from number one, we have that f of, now this is just, we said that zero, so that means it's just f of negative f of x is just equal to two times f of x. With this in mind, now let's actually plug in x and y both equal to one, so p, one, one 
is then if we plug this back into you know, the original, so I have f of one times f of one, then subtract f of one, is equal to two times f of one, then plus one. And so we see that f of one and then minus f of one, that's gonna be zero. So in other words, I'll put zero on the left-hand side is equal to f of zero, which is to the right-hand side equal to two times f of one plus one. Okay, and now simply to see that if I just solve this on its own for f of one, we see that f of one is just gonna equal to negative one half. And then, and then if I plug in back into here for x is equal to one, so that means f of negative f of one is then going to equal to what we said that's gonna be f of one half according to right over here. We just substitute this back in, which is then equal to two times f of one. And then we said that f of one is equal to negative one half, substitute this back here. So that means that's just gonna equal negative one. Okay, and so to further imply saying that f of one half coming from over here is indeed just going to equal to just f of one. Okay, then following up, so now we do the following. So I have f of negative f of one half as our input. We said that originally f of one half is equal to f of one. So f of one was originally equal to negative one half. So it's a negative, so that negates it. So now we're left with f of one half, which that was back to f of one, okay? And so, in other words, that's the same thing as saying two times f of one half back to the original assertion that we just plug in back into here. Then that means we originally said that f of one half is equal to negative one, so two times negative one is equal to negative two. However, this is a contradiction. We're dealing with two different numbers over here not equaling to each other. So that means a contradiction on this scenario over here. So I'll mark that as an x. Therefore, z equals zero does not work in this situation. So with that in mind, let's now move on to the next case, z is equal to negative one. Okay, so with case number two in hand, z is equal to negative one we're dealing with. So if I plug this back in, so that means that means we, this implies that f of negative one is equal to zero, okay? And then from equation number three, what we're dealing with, so that means I plug in um, negative one for z, so that means this is going to be, so let me first write and from equation three that f of negative f of x is indeed just going to equal negative x, okay? Implying that from equation number four over here, what we're dealing with, so now let's actually substitute for x. Instead of x, we'll put in negative f of x. So I'll apply to number four, then put x for negative f of x. So that means that will yield us with, so that means I put in negative f of x for x, so that means negative f of negative f of x. So let me actually write down full first. And then therefore this implying that from equation three over here that f of f of negative x is equal to negative x, plug this back in. So that means instead we're just left with f of x on the left hand side. And then expand this out even further. So equals to two times f of negative f of x and then plus f of x. All right. And so we actually just simplify this further. So of course we set that from here, this is equal to negative x. So I have negative two x and then add this with f of x. However, this actually leads to a contradiction that if we lead thing, if we look at things from the extreme left and the extreme right hand side, we can't solve anything for the function f of x that we solve it simultaneously. So therefore in this situation slash scenario, this is a contradiction. And so that leaves off with just one more solution to test out. So we'll move on to the final case where z is going to equal negative, or my bad, positive one. All right, so all that's left is z is equal to one. So that means this gives the implication that f of one is going to equal zero. And then from equation three, we plug this back in. Then that has to mean that f of f of x is just going to equal positive x and so from equation four. So this is basically the similar situation we're dealing with. So let X be substituted now for F of X. So if I plug in F of X back into here, so it means F of F of X, which we said that's equal to X. So the left-hand side is gonna be F of negative X. And so that's just equal to two times F of F of X, which is just X. And then add this with F of X, just like that. And so now let's say that if we let x equals one, so let x equals one, so that means f of negative one is going to equal to two times one plus f of one, 
and we set that f of one is equal to zero, so that means that's just gonna equal two. And so what this means is that if I plug f of negative one back to the input over here, so in other words, that's, that will be the same thing as saying f of two is equal to f of f of negative one, which is equal to negative one. Okay, and so we have no um, contradictions yet so far. So now let's actually put in the assertion that P and then our input is F of X and then we have that Y is going to equal two. So with this expansion, I have so going, going back to over here. So that means I have F of F of X and then times F of two, subtract F of F of X. And then if, you, and then if we simplify this out even further, so we have F of two is equal to negative one. So that means F of negative f of x and then f of f of x which we said it's x so it's minus x and so that's equal to 2 times so plug in f of f of x which we said that's x so 2 times x and then add this with 2 times f of x and so let's fix this up a little bit for this input over here so i have f of factor out the negative so f of x and then plus x so that means i could just go back to over here originally so that means i have 2 times f of x plus x and then plus f of f of x plus x and of course this is still equal to whatever it is above over here so 2x plus um, 2 f of x so that means if i simplified this out so let's see i have 2 f of x plus 2x plus f of f of x plus x set this equal to 2x plus 2f of x. This is just coming from over here. You'll notice that we have terms that cancel each other out. So that means f of f of x plus x is equal to zero, which we said that f of some real number z is equal to zero. So that means all we have to do is now that we set that z is equal to one. So set the input equal to one. So f of x plus x equals one. And so therefore it is pretty straightforward to see that f of x is equal to one subtract x for all real numbers x. And so that actually therefore completes our, and this is our only function that satisfies the following, which you can easily check and satisfy that it does indeed work just like that. So there you have it. And uh, so that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.